Alright, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while now. And basically what I just want to show you are some some builds that I like to use in a multiplayer battle in a Polyon Total War. <coughs> so um yeah, let's go with that. So the first one, uh my favorite build for Austria, uh is going with um Arzuk Charles. Two, three, four. Uh, you pick five Grenzers. You take um, three German Fusiliers, two Hungarian Fusiliers. You, of course, pick the Archduke Charles Legion, the 47th Kazak Regiment, and the 1st Regiment Emperor's Own. These are semi elites, so they're not like foot guards or anything, um, but they can definitely hold their ground. And But these come with the DLC. So you need a DLC pack. I don't know which one of the two. There are, I think, three DLC packs for um, Napoleon Toll War that gives you an addition uh, of units. There are two packs that just give you an addition, and there is one pack, the Pensilior Campaign or something like that, that adds the campaign in Spain, and it adds the guerrilla units for Spain. But anyways, so you add these guys, and then you have two Hungarian Hussars, the Archduke... Ferdinand, Charles Legion, whatever, and then the first Hussars. Uh, this is a heavy cap unit, you want to spare this <coughs> if for like the last moments in game, like that, like late game, they just wreck everything late game, even squares. Uh, to Hungarian Hussars, these are just quality Hussars. They can basically beat most of the Hussars in game, and then you have the first Hussar, uh, this is a very light cavalry unit. Um, this one you usually use to scout with, but you also don't really want to throw them away. Um, the Austrians are generally uh, in just a normal shootout against Britain and France. They cannot compete with, uh, or even Prussia, but with the with like build-up skill and knowledge of the game, uh, this army is very viable to play against any sort of player. Uh, this general makes sure that every unit uh, becomes very cost efficient in the sense that they will not route until they have like, I don't know, 10 or 15 men. But anyway, this is my build I've basically always used for um, for Austria. Apart when I go when I go up against the Ottomans, I usually go for Hungarian Fusiliers since they are better in melee. Uh, and if you're going against uh, for example, Britain, you might just as well swap these Hungarian Fusiliers for German Fusiliers um, because they're the same and just a little bit cheaper. Good. Now let's go to Great Britain. I have not played a lot of battles with Great Britain in Napoleon Toll War. Well, I do have my fair share of battles with Britain, but um, in like the last months I played this game, I think I barely played with Britain. Now, what I'd like to do with Britain is I bring Major General Picton. I always bring him, uh, just because I like him. And, uh, yeah, okay, he costs more than double than the General Staff. But bringing a three-star General, I think, is in most cases better than bringing a one-star General. Um, you, of course, go with two King German Legion Lightfoot and three Lightfoots. Um, and then it's basically up to you. People like to bring the 15th... His, uh, the 10th Hussars, uh, because they can shoot, people like to bring the Royal Scots Grace, but basically the strength in Britain lies within his infantry, so the best thing you can do is actually just take like two meat shields, uh, I don't know, take four foot, and then just spam elites really. If you want a very solid build with Britain, uh, some, some people even change their generals. Uh, to a foot guard unit. But in any case, uh, Britain is... well, yeah. It is not a faction I use a lot. You, you mainly use it to like uh, play defensive and like skirmish with. That's why I don't really have a favorite build for it as I barely played it in the last months that I played the game. Now for Denmark, I do have a build. Uh, for Denmark, you go with... Um, I don't know which general it was, so we'll have to wait. But anyways, you go with two Jaegers. You go with... Um, two Jaegers. Of course, you pick as many elites as possible. 
and then you go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, yes, you go with one dragoon, uh, a dragoon, a light dragoon, and a militia unit. Uh, no, hang on. Bring that general. Yes, it was the most expensive general. And you bring two cavalry units. This was the army. Uh, basically, you want to use your Jaegers to just kind of uh, be the meat shield and be annoying, and then you just overwhelm your your opponent with a lot of infantry. And of course, the general is going to make sure that um, your army doesn't die. Now, for France, what I'd like to do for France is and what people like to do with France is uh, they bring a normal general staff and you're gonna bring three old guards. These three old guards they provide morale bonuses so you don't really need a three-star general. Uh, you would like to bring four chasseurs a cheval uh, or five depending on what you like really. Uh, I like to bring four chasseurs not five uh, and then I bring four Swiss foot, a fusilier of the line and then I either bring my fifth unit is either a Hussar unit, a Lancer unit, or another Chasseur à Cheval. So that is up to you how you uh, fill that in. Uh, you can even bring an artillery piece if that is allowed, but this is a build I really like for Napoleon Total War that I really used a lot. Um, and just the funds you have left over here you can just spend on which cavalry unit you would like. It's basically the same cost. So, yeah. Now for the Ottomans. This build, um, I really like this build. You pick Ahmed Al Jazeera. I think this is my favorite build in the in the whole game. Uh, you pick two light infantry, then you pick seven line infantry. You pick two Bashi bazooks. You give them all three unit experience. You bring three Semets. You give them all two experience. You bring two Salithar guards and to Mount Nassim. This army over here, it is not the strongest Ottoman army out there. The strongest Ottoman army out there has only Mount Nassim and such, but I really like working with this army. This is by far my favorite build in Napoleon Total War, and I've had a lot of fun with it, I won a lot of battles with it. Uh, definitely one you should use. These light infantry, they're basically the meat shields of the army, but you shouldn't treat them like meat shields. You should try to uh, make them last as long as possible. For Portugal, uh, the generals, I like to go with a three star general or the max general. Uh, in any case, you bring four Portuguese calf, even though Portuguese calf sucks. You make sure you bring Casadores. You, you bring five of them, the max, because they are really good. And then you just bring a lot of infantry. Uh, so this is a build I really like to use with Portugal. You have calf, you have lights, and you've got a bunch of infantry. They're not elite, so you can uh, you can even rank a calf unit, I think, with the funds that you have left. Or you could take one out, uh, and you could bring a meat shield, and then you could level one up uh, so that it is stronger than the rest. It might act as a semi-elite or anything, but it's not going to give any like morale bonuses to your troops. So best to just bring another unit. The morale bonus of this army is that you have a lot of units that are together. So this ma that makes this army hard to break. Also, these lights are the best lights in the game. So it is you can never go wrong with this army. Now with Prussia, uh, I have a very. It's also I think one of my favorite armies in the game. And I actually uh, have built this army. It's it's slightly different than Counterfect's army. What I like to do with uh, this is I go with the three-star general, of course. Uh, and I think you've seen me use it. Like I've used this army a lot of my videos. Same goes for the Ottoman army. Same goes for the French army. Um, you have five Prussian fusiliers. You have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five. I can't count. Six musketeers. You bring three foot guards. You bring a militia, and then you bring three cav units. This gives you exactly zero funds. 
This is a very fun army, it is defensive, but also offensive, considering you have the Lancers, considering you have this meat shield of militia, and all the all the armies I've posted right now, they can also be used in 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v4s, they're very viable armies in a 1v1, in 2v2s, basically in every fight. So this army is definitely one, if, if you want to use it, you can definitely, well, use it. Now for Russia. Russia is very... Well, you play it in a certain way, just like the Ottomans. But Russia still has some good infantry. Uh, I have not played a lot of I have played plenty of battles with Russia, but not a lot of battles. Uh, I haven't really came across a very good army for the Russians, since there are so many ways to play the Russians. You can play them with a lot of cavalry. Uh, I like to bring four mounted rifles and uh, a lot of Cossack cavalry. Um, then I go with... Now you can either choose to go with militia and then you just back it up with elite infantry. Like this. This is a complete rush by the way. So this is like some sort of army that you want to play in snowy, uh, like in very snowy territory where you can rush. You can use the mounted cavalry to harass the other cavalry. You can charge them with the Cossack cavalry to pin everything down. You can use the militia to use as a meat shield and shoot at, shoot at expensive units to damage them. And then you bring in the elites and you just basically wreck everything. Now there is uh, something else. Some more. Well, there is some. So uh, there is more safe play to it. You can get uh, three Russian Jaegers, the 17th Jaeger Regiment. Uh, you can get like two Musketeer, Moscow Musketeer, uh, of course the Semenovsky Lifeguard, you want to get, of course, the Lifeguard Foot, since they are really good. Um, and then you, well, you can bring these guys, this gives you four, run this is for a more defensive safe play, but still with the, uh, with, uh, the Russians, basically their units have an insane charge bonus, uh, so you definitely want to get into melee with your enemy um, at favorable positions. Now for Spain. Spain is actually a faction I have maybe played one or two battles with. So I can't really give you a very good build with uh, Spain. But they do have some um, skirmish units like these over here. Uh, this, this cavalry unit, this cavalry unit, this cavalry unit. Um, I don't think these have guerrilla, but these units are basically guerrilla units. You can place them all, all over the field to um, harass your opponent uh, when he's moving out of his base. Uh, but I haven't played a lot with Spain. Uh, I've played plenty against it, but yeah, I have not enough experience to tell uh, enough with Spain. You can play around with the... Uh, well, actually, I can say that you can play around, of course, with the skirmish on uh, maps like Italian Grassland, Savoy Hilltop, uh, Arid Cliff, Syrian Ridge, uh, and all that stuff, to just basically keep the enemy at bay and then run up with your infantry. You basically want to go with, uh, of course, two balloon guards. That's definitely something that should be in your army. You should have some decent calf, a lot of flying infantry, some lights, and of course, the, um, the guerrilla units. Then we're here at Sweden. I like Sweden. Sweden is a very nice, cool faction. You of course pick the elites. You pick two skirmishers. It's basically the same as Denmark. They're also basically the same faction. Uh, you go of course with the three-star general. Um, I'm gonna take these away to make it a little bit more organized. So you have the four lifeguards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Jaegers, and then. Uh, the militia units. Now you can remove one and the militia unit and then you can take two of these cavalry units. Uh, and I think this is a very viable army for Sweden. It's basically the same as Denmark. For the Netherlands, the Netherlands is just... <laughs> the Netherlands are most likely the worst faction in the game. Uh, so you definitely definitely need some morale. Though they have Dutch uh, flankiers, which are the skirmish units you take about five of them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, line infantry. Uh, I like to go with a heavy cav unit when playing with uh, the Dutch and just 
wait uh, until late game and then you can just bring uh, three hussars? No, actually two hussars and a meat shield. Meat shield always comes in handy with the Dutch uh, for sure to catch like the first volley with uh, f from the enemy lights and then your lights come in and get a perfect volley on their lights and so like you have to use that kind of strategies to basically win with uh, the Dutch the, well the Netherlands, the United Netherlands or the Bavarian Republic whatever it is. Anyway so these were, uh, let's see if I have army saved no, I have this, <laughs> my usual Ottoman army saved. So, this was it for uh, Napoleon builds. Those were my favorite build builds that I like to use with some insights of other factions where I do not have a lot of experience with. But anyway, uh, that was it. Thank you guys for watching.